Over the past six months, I've tried 20 different crabs and I'm gonna do a tier list ranking each crab. And today I'm gonna start with a stone crab claw. Now I got these at the end of the stone crab season. So these are actually frozen. Doing my research now, I've realized that maybe frozen wasn't the best way to try these. And I'm excited to try some fresh ones in the next few weeks when the season opens back up. It was crazy how thick these shells were and actually they were really hard to open. So for this taste test, I got a small claw and a large claw, broke them up and I wanted to see if the small claw tasted better or the large claw tasted better. The small claw was first and it was pretty tender. It had a little bit of sweetness, but you could actually tell it was frozen. It was still good though. The large claw on the other hand, it tasted a lot like almost gamier than the small claw. And I recommend going with a smaller claw and I'm excited to see what these things taste like fresh. But for now, I'm ranking this C tier. Up next is the Norwegian King Crab. I got two of these shipped to me live straight from the waters of Norway. And these things looked like absolute aliens. To cook them, I decided just to go ahead and steam them in my pot. It took about I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to get them done. And then after that, I let them cool so the meat kind of solidified inside of them. Now for king crabs, most of the meat is in the legs. So that's what I went for first. And I was a little bit disappointed with the amount of meat that were inside these legs. I think these crabs were just on like the lighter side. So when I actually got some of the meat out, you can see there wasn't a ton there, but I was still excited to try it. I gave this leg meat a taste and it was super sweet, but the price was over $700 for one of these crabs. I'm gonna rank this C tier for that reason. Next up are freshwater soft shell crabs straight from Japan. And I thought these were actually gonna be soft and they weren't, they were actually really hard. And what you're supposed to do with these are deep fry them. Some people say to batter them. Some people say just drop them right in the oil and then season them. I decided to go ahead and take them out of their package, which was pretty crazy because it was almost like fake trees or something in there. You can see it right there and just deep fry them. So I got them all out, made sure there are no dead ones. And you can just see how small these things are. Dropped them in a fryer at 325 degrees. And after a few minutes, they turned bright red and I gave it a taste. You eat the whole crab when you do this. And I decided I was gonna go ahead and put some salt, pepper, and a little bit of hot sauce on them as well. Gave it a taste and look, all you taste is the shell. It tastes like burnt shell. I'm gonna go with an F for this one. If you've watched my videos for a while, you know that one of my favorite crabs is the Maryland crab. I grew up in Maryland and have continued to eat Maryland crabs throughout my life. And I think honestly, it is my favorite crab. In my opinion, to be a Maryland crab, it has to be steamed. We don't boil crabs in Maryland and we steam them with either J.O. That's actually the one that I think is the best or some people use Old Bay as well. And after steaming them, you're gonna pick it out. And my favorite part is definitely the claws. I don't know what it is about a Maryland blue crab claw, but I absolutely love Love it and reminds me of some good times as a kid eating those from the Annapolis seafood market. Now, one of the most sought after pieces of a Maryland crab, of course, is the back fin like lump right there in the back. And if you cut it right, you can get that whole lump out in one big piece. And that is an absolute delicious bite, even though I do love the claws the most. I'm going to go ahead and say this Maryland crab right here is an S tier crab. Dungeness crabs are up next, and I don't really know this for sure, but a lot of people say that they have different flavors from the different areas of the coast they come from. These are from Oregon, I believe, and they were shipped directly to my door. They were a little bit pricey, but you can find better prices on these, especially if you live near like an H Mart, or if you're lucky enough to be on the West Coast, you can get them out of the water yourself. Now, the one thing I do like about these crabs is the amount of meat they have. Not only do they have a lot of meat inside the body, they have a ton of meat in the legs too, and the claws as well. And if you're someone that likes to eat the stuff inside the crab, I've noticed that Dungeness crabs have more of that like crab butter than any crab I've picked so far. So starting off, I'm gonna eat a little bit of that back fin meat. This thing was absolutely delicious, but uh, it's still just not as sweet as like a Maryland crab. I'm gonna go with a tier for the Dungeness. Now I know this isn't a different species of crab, but just a blue crab in a different life cycle stage. But this is also a really delicious way to eat a blue crab. This is a soft shell crab and you gotta prepare it first, meaning cleaning out the lungs, cleaning off the face and other parts there so you're not eating that. And then you can cook it however you want. I like breading it lightly and then just deep frying it or also grilling it's really good, but you can't go wrong with like a true deep frying, getting in like a beer batter as well. You get all the different tastes you would with a normal crab, but I really like the richness of everything else that's left inside the crab too. The claws are probably one of the best snacks, but I'm telling you right now, this bite right here 
is absolutely delicious. I think you ask most true crab lovers out there and they're gonna tell you that a summer day eating some soft shell crabs is something awesome to behold. I'm gonna go A tier for those. This next crab looks an awful lot like a Dungeness crab, but it's actually caught off the East Coast and it's a Jonah crab. I've never heard of them before until someone said in a video that I should try them out. And I got two of them from Angelica Seafood right up there in Gloucester, Massachusetts. The first thing I tried were the claws because they looked a lot like stone crab claws. And I'd wondered if maybe because they were fresh, they were actually going to taste better than stone crab claws. Just like stone crab claws, they were really hard to open. And when I tasted it, it was really good. Like the stone, the claws themselves, I think tasted like a better version of the stone crab claws. And I think it might be that they were fresh compared to the frozen one I had. Now opening up the body, there really wasn't much meat in there. And the meat it did have was like kind of stringy. So I think it's really meant to just be like, you eat the claws kind of like a stone crab. I'm putting it up there with the stone crab at a C tier. Next up is another king crab, but this time it's a golden king crab from Alaska. It came frozen, which was fine, but it was a whole king crab. I put it in a boiling pot of water for about four or five minutes just to get it hot again. I got the leg meat out because like I said before, a lot of king crabs meat is in the legs. I gave it a taste and this was better than the Norwegian one. I like this a lot more. The meat was like a lot more firm and sweeter too. I'm gonna go ahead and put this as B tier. This is one of the craziest crabs that I tried out of all of them. This is called a horse hair crab. You get them straight from Japan and it is wild how like fine and smooth these hairs are on it. I mean, take a look at this stuff. It really does feel like horse hair. Now steaming it, you just steam it like any other normal crab and getting the meat out. It was kind of weird because it was really stringy. I thought it wasn't going to be as stringy as it was. So I was a little surprised when I opened it up and I couldn't just like get a big piece to pull out. Now the meat I did get out from the legs tasted really good, but I was a little bit unimpressed by the amount of meat in the crab and also especially the amount of meat in the actual body of the crab. But the taste was really good, so I'm gonna go ahead and go B tier on the horsehair crab. This is the first snow crab that I've tried so far and one of the crazy things that I've learned about snow crab is there's actually so many different types of snow crab that when you buy snow crab, you really don't know what you're getting. These right here are straight from Alaska and they're called Baradai crab. I guess they're the bigger kind of versions of snow crab and looking at them, they're bigger than ones that I've had before at different restaurants or the grocery store. And tasting them, this is the best tasting snow crab I've ever had. I'm going A tier for Baradai. Now this is a brown crab and I'm a little intimidated by this one. The crab was absolutely massive and reading the reviews online, People said it doesn't taste like a normal crab. So I started with the claws. I moved to a leg as well and tried that. I tried all different parts of this crab and I gotta say, it really wasn't that good. I can't explain exactly what it tasted like, but almost like dirty. Like it didn't taste like a normal sweet kind of crab meat. The legs tasted the same way and the body meat did as well. So for me, this crab, brown crab, I'm not gonna rank this one high at all. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this one just a D tier ranking. I think that's the highest I can go for. Now I'm back to try some snow crab again and I got both of these snow crab actually from my local grocery store. They were having a sale for $6.99 a pound for snow crab clusters. I noticed when I was in there that one snow crab was bigger than the other, so I told him to give me some of both. Both were $6.99 a pound, which is absolutely crazy. And I wanted to try to see if I could taste a difference. Now, in case you didn't know, a lot of crab that you buy at the store is already pre-cooked, especially ones that are coming from faraway places like Alaska and stuff like that. So all you gotta really do is just steam it for three or four minutes, and it's gonna be heated all the way through. Now, this is the smaller one, and it still looked like a good amount of meat in there, and it tasted okay. And I was pretty surprised the bigger one actually tasted better and made me think it might be a Baradai crab. So for the smaller one, I'm going to rank that a C. And for the bigger one, it's definitely going to be a B. This is a box crab and it's probably one of the wildest crabs that I've tried so far. When it gets really tight and draws on all of its legs and claws and stuff like that, it really just looks like a stone. Like sitting on the bottom, I could see predators just like going right past this thing and never thinking it was anything other than just a stone on the bottom. Now, a lot of research points to crab actually feeling pain when they're cooked. So I make sure that when I get a live crab, I do try to kill it before I cook it because it just seems like a quicker and more humane way to go ahead and dispatch the crab. Now this had good amount of body meat and good amount of leg meat as well. But in my opinion, I think the leg meat was actually better than the body meat. Now this tasted like a mix between lobster and crab. I'm going to rank this B tier. Now this leg right here is only a small piece of a huge king crab leg that I got. 
and I was surprised just how big these were. Now these are red king crabs and they're the colossal size legs. They're so big that I couldn't break them open with my hands. I had to get some scissors out to actually cut out the meat. And this was the first crab to me that actually rivaled blue crabs. I'm gonna go ahead and have to put this one as an S tier. Now, if you've had a California roll, you've had this type of crab before, it's imitation crab meat. And even though it's imitation crab meat, there is about 2% of crab in there. So we're gonna say that this counts as eating crab. Now there's two different ways that you can get this. You can get in like the chunks like I have here or the sticks, whichever way, I think there's really no taste difference at all. It's just cut up differently. And I kind of like the imitation crab meat. I'm gonna rank this C tier. This is a California king crab. And right away, I noticed something about this compared to other king crabs. It had huge spikes. I mean, like all over it. And I knew it was gonna be really difficult to actually eat this crab because I was gonna get stabbed the whole time. Now, also, it was actually smaller than I thought it would be. Look how skinny these legs were. They're like smaller than snow crab legs. And there wasn't much meat at all. And for the price, I'm not sure if this is really worth it. The taste was good, but I think a snow crab would taste just as good as this king crab. I'm going to go ahead and rank this one on a C tier just for those reasons. Next is Louisiana blue crabs. Now, these are from the Louisiana Crawfish Company, and they're boiled. If you're from Maryland, you know that boiling is just not how we do it. And for me, it's not that the crab gets mushy because they don't. That's a wives' tale right there, old wives' tale, that the crab gets mushy when you boil it. They the texture is perfectly fine. It's the taste for me. There's almost like a licorice taste to them, and it drops the crab down from a S tier all the way down to a B tier. Now, there's two more crabs left, and the first one's going to be a golden king crab straight from Alaska, but I actually got this from a local grocery store, and I was curious if the quality was going to be the same as other king crabs I've tried, and right away when I opened the package, I noticed a few things. One, the crab legs seemed smaller, and two, they were kind of like bits and pieces of crab legs. Some were really small pieces of it, and I think basically these are kind of like the leftover bits and pieces that when they process crab, they kind of just throw them to the side or throw them in these bags for a less expensive version. Picking the crab meat too, I noticed it wasn't as firm as the other crab meat that I've had, the king crab meat that I've had, and tasting it, it was fine, but it's not what you would expect from a king crab. I'm gonna go ahead and rank this D tier. And the final crab are gonna be snow crabs again from Canada. Now these are caught in the Atlantic Ocean, and I was kinda hopeful these were gonna taste good, but I did get these frozen from a local grocery store, but they were caught just recently. They were actually packaged pretty well, and, and the legs themselves were actually pretty good size and for the most part intact, unlike the king crab claws that I had before. But as soon as I tasted them, I knew they were subpar quality. They were way too salty and chewy. These are F tier crabs.